Finally, there is a reliable electric steering kit available for the E-Propulsion Navy Evo series of electric outboards. Allow me to introduce you to the Panther T4 electric steering kit, along with the exclusive Tiny Boat Nation bolt-on kit for the E-Propulsion Navy 3.0 Evo and the Navy 6.0 Evo motors. This video is gonna be a walkthrough, step-by-step -step guide on how to install this kit. The Panther T4 electric remote steering kit is made for most motors out on the market. And if you buy this kit from us, all you need to do is follow the included instructions. And the instructions will walk you through how to install this on most all of your electric and non-electric outboard. And up until now, you've never been able to use a Panther steering kit on an E-Propulsion Navy Evo series of motor because it was not a direct bolt-on. And over the past several months of working very closely with E-Propulsion, Tiny Boat Nation has been able to develop a complete bolt-on kit that will allow the Panther Panther T4 steering kit to work with any of the Navy Evo series of motor, either the 3.0 or the 6.0. Yes, you heard that right. I said 100% bolt-on. You won't have to make any permanent modifications to your motor. And E-Propulsion has approved the use of this kit. It will not void your factory warranty on your E-Propulsion Navy Evo series motor. Now here's a look at everything that's going to come inside your box for your kit for your Navy Evo either 3.0 or 6.0 bolt-on T4 steering kit. You're going to get your Panther T4 actual steering motor right here along with the armature that it needs to turn up the outboard back and forth. You're going to get a wiring harness with built-in fuses and relays to run the motor. You're going to get an electronic steering remote with a 24-foot cable along with all of the hardware that's needed to bolt this up directly to any of your standard outboards or electric outboards. And the Tiny Boat Nation version of this kit also includes a pre-cut threaded rod that is stainless steel. It's already cut down to the length that you need to work with the E-Propulsion Navy Evo series of motors. You're also going to receive a specialty nut and spacer that's made specifically for this Navy Evo kit and your cover for your threaded rod which will also be pre-cut to length so you don't have to do anything yourself. This is all just 100% bolt-on. To walk you through the install today, I'm gonna to be using this Navy 3.0 Evo, but the instructions that you're gonna see in this video are the exact same for a Navy 6.0 Evo as well. You're gonna use the exact same parts, the exact same installation method. There's no difference between the 3.0 and the 6.0 Navy Evo installs. The first thing we need to do is remove this stud from the bottom of the outboard located here. We're gonna do that by removing the four bolts that hold this fan cover. This is just one big plate and it covers up a fan that actually cools the motor. The first two bolts we're going to remove are located right back here and they are a size T30 Torx head bit. I like to use a long extension and a ratchet to get them off. Now from the factory these come with some blue Loctite on them so they may be a little bit tight. Don't worry just use the correct size wrench and they will come out just fine. The next one we're going to remove is located right here and to get to it all you have to do is turn the outboard just like this and then you can remove that bolt as well. And to get to this last bolt on the other side you will need to turn the outboard just like this and then you will be able to access that bolt. When you go to remove this last bolt, remember that is the only one holding this fan plate. So you will need to hold the fan cover so that plate does not fall down and scratch your motor. Once that bolt is removed, you can drop the entire fan cover down and that is what it looks like. So now with this fan cover removed, we can go ahead and remove this nut right here, which holds in this studded piece on the bottom of the fan cover. For that, I just use a crescent wrench it does have a nylon lock nut and will take you a little bit of effort to get it off at first but once you free it from that nylon locking insert then the lock washer just comes off and this entire stud will come out now you can take the nylon lock nut and the stud and set them off to the side you will not need them anymore you will be reusing the lock washer so hang on to that out of the t4 steering kit you're going to grab one of the regular flat washers you're going to grab one of the steering stems and the black nut that comes with the tiny boat nation steering kit on the top side of this fan shroud cover there is a section right here you can see that nut fits in there just like so. Then you're going to take your steering stem, you're going to put the lock washer on first, 
and then you're going to put the flat washer on top of that and on the back side of this fan shroud you're going to hold that nut down with your finger and simply install this steering stud into that nut once you've got it started you can go ahead and take your crescent wrench or your adjustable wrench and go ahead and tighten this down now this does not have to be crazy tight all you need to do is just make sure that this lock washer is flat and that this is on there good and snug with the steering stem installed all we need to do is slide the fan cover back into place and using the same four bolts that came out put them right back in and tighten them down as far as tightening these goes it does not take a lot of pressure you just want them to be good and snug the blue Loctite that's on them from the factory will help keep these from moving ever again. Then we'll just turn the motor back to the appropriate angle so that we can get the rest of these bolts back in and then tighten them back down. The next step is to remove these two side covers on each one of the tubes on the side of the e-propulsion outboard. There's going to be one located on this side and there's another located on this side. The e-propulsion outboard comes with two different styles of protective caps. One is going to be flat on the front and not have anything that pops out. You're not going to need that one anymore. You can set it off to the side. The other one has a push lock section right here and you'll notice that it has a green o-ring on the inside what you will do is from the inside you will push that part out and it will come out just like this and you can set this little piece off to the side you will not need it make sure that that o-ring is in place because that is going to provide a seal against this shaft right here to keep water and dirt and nasty stuff from getting onto your steering shaft. You're going to take that cover that we just popped the middle out of and you're going to install it on this side of the motor. If you are looking at the outboard from inside the boat, it is going to be on your left hand side. And if you're standing on the outside of your boat looking towards the outboard, it's going to be on your right hand side. The side that this needs to go on has to be the long tube side of the e-propulsion outboard. The other side of the outboard does not have a long tube tube shaft here and this is where we're going to install the T4 Panther motor. Next you're going to want to take your T4 remote steering motor setup here with the drive rod and the first thing we're going to do is extend this drive rod out just a little bit and to do that all you need to do is grab the drive rod and turn it counterclockwise and it will start to move it just a little bit away from this part of the drive rod and you're going to extend this drive rod out until there is about a quarter inch of space in between the drive rod and this black part of the rod here and you can see right there about a quarter inch gap. That's going to give you the maximum amount of travel and we found that's the best adjustment for a Navy Evo setup. Next thing you're going to do is take this threaded nut and it is marked L on one side, the side that's closest to the actual motor. This side is left hand threaded and this side is right hand threaded. So what you'll need to do is take this and turn this clockwise just like this to get it to go all the way up against the plastic part of this motor. Once you've got that locked down hand tight, then you can go ahead and install this into the guide rod tube. And then you can start spinning this whole entire motor assembly clockwise until the nut makes contact with the side of your e-propulsion unit. Now once it makes contact, if you continue turning it, you're going to start loosening this side up here because this is a left hand thread. So just get it to where it's nice and snug, somewhere right in there, and it does not matter if it winds up to where yours is pointed forward or backwards or like this. This part does not matter. It can face any direction that you want and you can adjust it if you want. We're going to run ours just like this. Now here on the back side of that large nut you'll see there is a what we call a grub screw but it's actually a tensioning screw and what that's going to do is put tension against the thread to hold this all in place. The size of this allen key is 1 8 inch. You can do this with a standard allen key if you want. I'm using one that is on this 3 8 ratchet. And we'll get it until it is snug. It does not take a lot of pressure. And now this unit is all tight and in place. You don't need to do anything else over here. Now on this side of the guide rod, you'll see that you can move this thing back and forth freely. And that is why we told you to put that quarter inch spacing on the other end. And then there's two distinct sides on this end of the guide rod. There's one side that's completely flat. And there's one part right here that has a notch in it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your steering stem that comes with the T4 steering kit and you're going to take this nylon washer that has two flat sides on it that comes with a TB Nation kit. You're going to put the nylon washer down first. And that is going to give this steering stem just enough space so that it will clear up in here when the steering rod is on. Then on the back side you're going to take one of the nuts that's included with the kit and install it. 
This side of the steering stem is captured on each side of that groove, so all you need to do is take either a crescent wrench, an adjustable wrench, and tighten down the nut on the back side. Again, don't have to go crazy with this, just enough to get this thing nice and snug, and you still want to be able to move this back and forth so that when you're moving the steering rod back and forth, this thing has enough rotation in it to clear the side of your outboard here. Assembling the steering linkage arm is very simple. You have two lock nuts. You'll need to go ahead and put those on each side of the rod and thread them on a couple of inches or so. And you'll put the other one on the other side and do the same thing. Then you'll take your two steering arm connectors and thread them onto each side. And I usually go ahead and just thread them all the way on until they stop. About right there. And right there. Now what you need to do is take a tape measure, extend it out to about a foot, and lock it down. What you're going to be measuring is from the inside face of this part of the steering linkage to the inside face of this steering linkage. And you want them to be about 9 and 3 sixteenths inches. So what I'll do is I'll do a couple of rotations on this side and a couple of rotations on this side to open it up until we get to exactly 9 and 3 sixteenths. There you go. You can see we are at 9 and 3 16 spacing between the two. And all I'll do is run these lock nuts up until they make contact with the steering linkage on the end. Now these only need to be finger tight, so just tighten them up against those steering linkages by hand for right now. We'll give them a final tighten later. And then the last thing you'll need to do is install your cover. It is a split wire loom, and you'll install that by splitting it just like so and installing it over the rod all the way down. And this is going to protect that metal rod from making contact with the side of your outboard and scratching it up. Now before you install the steering linkage, you're going to need the two O-rings that come in the kit. What I like to do is take just a small dab of grease and put it on the end of the steering stem right here and then place one of the O-rings on top. That will hold the O-ring in place. And then take a little bit more grease, put it on the bottom of this steering stem and put that o-ring on there and that will hold it in place while you install the steering linkage. Now the steering linkage on the end is spring loaded so you'll pull this back to open up that cavity and slide it onto your steering stem right there and then it locks in place. Now to get it installed on this side you're probably going to have to move the motor just a little bit to get it to line up and then pull that locking collar back slide it down and over and then the locking collar will go into place. Next, you'll need your wiring harness. Now on the actual power and relay side of this, you only have about four feet of wire. So what I recommend doing is mounting the relay unit near your batteries, but I would mount it somewhere up high. This thing is encased and waterproof. You don't have to worry about it, but I would try to keep it up out of the water as much as possible. So if you mount this to the underside of the deck or somewhere up high on your transom, and these will connect to any 12 volt battery. Now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna be using this small 12 volt lithium battery, but you can connect this to to your boat's house battery if you want or if you want to run a dedicated battery for it you can just as long as it is a 12 volt battery either lithium AGM or lead acid will work fine and on this setup red is positive it has an inline fuse and black is negative now on one end of your wiring harness you're gonna have a two prong connector that matches the two prong connector on your steering unit here and those two just simply plug into each other. Very simple. And then on the other end of your wiring harness near your relays, you're gonna have a three prong connector right here. That is where the remote plugs into. And the remote has a matching three prong connector and you just simply plug them together. Now the unit is fully assembled, you can take your remote and give it a test run. The last thing you'll need to do is lock your locking nuts down and I just use a regular old crescent wrench or an adjustable wrench here. Hold on to your steering linkages here and just give them a little tighten. You don't have to go crazy with this, it does not need to be super super tight. Just enough to keep it from backing out. Now 
And the kit includes a few screws so that you can use the mounting holes on this relay box to mount this wherever you want inside your boat. And it also includes some zip ties so that you can help to route your wires and hold them up out of the way so that they're not contacting anything inside of your boat. The kit also includes a set of Velcro, one side for inside of your boat somewhere and one to go onto the back of the steering remote if you want to mount it somewhere in your cockpit or wherever you're gonna be standing while you're operating your steering system. And the adhesive on this Velcro is pretty high quality Quality, but it's a one-time use. You only get to stick it one place in your boat and that is it. If you mess up, you're going to need to get a new piece of Velcro to put this on because once the adhesive is used, it usually does not do very well being peeled off and stuck in a new place. That is it. It's that simple. We have made this kit as easy and bolt-on as possible so that when you buy your kit, you can get this thing installed and be out on the water in no time. Now, this bolt-on kit is only available at tvnation.net. There is a link down in the description box below if you want to check it out. And if you're interested in upgrading to the wireless remote so that you don't have to run a wired remote, we have those available as well. So if you want to go completely wireless with your remote steering kit, just check back with us. We'll have that video up shortly. But these are also available on the website, tvnation.net. Again, link down in the description box below.